Hello everybody and welcome to the Green Up Beacon Video News Magazine. I'm your host, Brittany Hoback, and today we have a great show planned. First up, I will be interviewing Alan Blair from the Department of Transportation, and we also have a uh, pre-filmed uh, segment with Melissa Mahaney from the Our Lady of Belfont Hospital. She is the Director of Home Health, and we also have a cooking segment where I have made the deluxe seven layer cookies, and it is a very good uh, cooking segment, so make sure you stay tuned, and we're going to have a couple commercials, and then we'll be right back. This is the Green Up Beacon News Magazine, a presentation of the Green Up Beacon and First in People's Bank and Trust. Also brought to you by Stoltz Pharmacy, Our Lady of Belfont Hospital, Carmen Funeral Home, Meredith Chiropractic Office, and Tanya Pullen, State Representative. Your host today, Brittany Hoback, along with co-host Tank Bond, and editor and producer Keith Atkins. This is an exclusive presentation of the Green Up Beacon GreenUpBeacon.com and GreenUpBeacon2.com. First and People's Bank has six convenient locations to serve you. From South Shore to the main office, First and People's Bank has been serving this area with complete banking services since 1932. Visit the home office near you, First and People's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. We are the home office. Come visit any of our six locations. Visit the Sungate Alpaca Company to experience the vibrant cultural heritage of South America and discover the extraordinary luxury fabric called alpaca. Wrap yourself in a stylish alpaca scarf, transform your living room by adding texture and color with a hand-loomed alpaca throw blanket, and add a little extra warmth and cozy fashion with an alpaca hat and matching gloves. Visit SungateAlpaca.com for all your alpaca needs. Find us on Facebook for special deals and inventory updates. Shop Sungate Alpaca. Hello everybody, we are back and I am up with my first guest, Alan Blair. So before we get down to business, why don't you sure. tell our viewers just a little bit about yourself. Sure, uh, I'm glad to be here and part of the show. I appreciate this uh, opportunity. Thank and, you so uh, much really for joining nice. us. Uh, as uh, my, uh, my position with the Kentucky Department of Highways, District 9, mm -hmm. uh, is the information officer. I basically am the public relations part of our highway department, which is part of the transportation cabinet. Okay. Uh, so it's a kind of a fancy way of saying I work for state government and I tell everybody that we're going to tax your gasoline. We're going to take that money and make you late for work when we fix the roads. So. <laughs> well, you know, hey, you got to put it somewhere, right? <laughs> you too. No, but, but seriously, it is a, a, a very important job. Mm -hmm. uh, I work with a lot of media. I work with a lot of public agencies and, and working with public meetings. Uh, to ensure that we have a uh, the information that gets out to the public about what their tax money is doing in mm -hmm. terms of building roads and making sure the roads are, are well kept. So you're the face? I'm the face of the, of the <laughs> highway department, yes. Very nice. So are you from the area? Uh, I'm from originally from uh, the Paintsville area Okay. Uh, and I went to uh, college at EKU in mm -hmm. Richmond. Uh, Spent about 20 years in journalism uh, as, uh, in various roles at newspapers, uh, from reporter to editor, and then uh, took on this job uh, in uh, 07 and uh, moved here from the Ashland area to Flemingsburg, which is okay. where our highway department is headquartered. Okay. Uh, and we, uh, in, in that job, we cover about 10 counties in Northeast Kentucky, so I still retain some of the territory I was used to as a sure. reporter. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the area here along the the Ohio River uh, up to Maysville, and then our territory extends down along the I-64 corridor uh, coming uh, east here towards the river. So that is your, mm -hmm. your district, district 9, I guess, parameters D there. District 9, <laughs> and we cover, um, I mean, everything to do with state highways from mm -hmm. uh, new construction to maintenance, uh, snow and ice removal uh, is probably our biggest thing right now. Sure. <laughs> uh, it's one of our priorities, uh, especially during the winter time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but anything to do with a highway, it, from the planning of new highways, um, traffic signs and signals, uh, you know, construction, uh, bridges, uh, we, we take care of it all out of that highway district office uh, in, in terms of state highways. And we also work with the county governments on uh, various uh, projects. They, you, may, you may see uh, counties working on road aid projects, we call it. Mm -hmm. um, they receive uh, portions of the gas tax money 
and they can set aside some of that for emergency projects. So, you know, we do get to see that, uh, get to work with them on that from time to time. Okay. So. And so I, I know we uh, spoke before the interview that the the bridge is not something that you guys are over. So well, we want to get that we want to get that know, out in the open right it, now. It, interestingly, uh, we did work on the the touchdown point. You know, okay. we worked in concert with ODOT uh, on on some of the area there where the point it's going to connect to US 23. Sure. You know, so we did kind of work with some of the right of way and making sure that that was a adequate connection to our state highway system. Sure. Uh, and we also worked with ODOT in. Uh, um, various other projects that, that kind of you know across state lines especially the bridges uh, you know we, we have a great partnership with them and they are wonderful to work with uh, they, they when they work on 52 on the other side of the Ashland bridges they mm -hmm. always inform us and you know we, we can help them with traffic control some on, on this side so uh, so we do work together in, in some ways but so I, I can see yes. how your your journalism uh, backgrounds I would imagine plays very nicely into all of this with it, just being able to communicate with all of these different agencies and then of course communicate with the public it, you, know, you know to it, do this effectively <laughs> yes it, it does and you know one of the one of the things that I like to try to do is take you know what I call engineer ease you know uh -huh. some of the you know because in any profession you have your own dialogue you have your sure. own words uh, you know in the in the journalism industry you know what's a lead what's a cut you know right we know what those are because we we have worked in that area but uh, so I take some of that jargon and some of that um, maybe it's a little harder to understand uh, from the transportation side of things sure. from the construction and building trades and I kind of take that and I, and I translate it into something that, that can get some uh, meaning out of for any member of the public absolutely and, you know it's an it's important for people to know uh, because every time they fill up at a gas tank. <laughs> and you uh, see that little breakdown sticker. You do. <laughs> and, and contrary to popular popular belief, we have very little of the, of the tax money mm -hmm. uh, coming off of a gallon of gas. Very little, uh, sure. a few of those pennies is, is ours. But we are charged with uh, making sure that those are spent wisely. Sure. And uh, so we are upfront with what we do with it. Uh, our number one concern is to be transparent, mm -hmm. that we want to make sure that everybody knows what we're doing with it. And, you know, and, and we try to communicate that. Um, and just in terms of letting people know which projects are, you know, every, during construction season, every month, uh, there's a, a bid letting and mm -hmm. those projects are let to contract and contractors are awarded jobs, whether it's paving or building a new road or installing a new bridge. Mm -hmm. And we try to let people know where that's gonna happen. Number one, we want them to know sure. what we're doing, but also we want to make sure that the traffic uh, understands that there's going to be some work zones. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> You're and trying to work in a hurry. <laughs> it, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and, and we don't want anybody to get hurt. Uh, the driver, and, and we've talked about this with uh, with you all as well as a lot of other papers, that the, the people who are hurt the most are the motorists. Sure. And we want to make sure that, you know, if they know where that construction is, maybe they can get a little... They can uh, head, plan ahead. Head, yes, <laughs> that's the key so that, there. Is and that's, and that's part of uh, part of the job. So. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I know that uh, Bud Matheny is here, and he is the president here of um, the McConnell House, which is where we mm -hmm. broadcast from every week, um, and we're so thankful for that. And um, he was, uh, we were speaking about how some of the money for the Department of Transportation is actually set aside to sort of be spent on non-transportation sort of related things, and so kind of goes into the well, touristy tourist uh, realm, it, yes. I guess. I know I'm not saying this right. <laughs> no, you're doing fine. Yeah. I, it, 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 we call that transportation enhancement. Okay. And uh, a lot of it, uh, it's federal dollars that, mm -hmm. that come down and is spent on various projects that have a transportation link. Right. Whether that is, uh, you know, a, an attraction near a highway mm -hmm. or a federal highway such as this, or, it, you know, it could be a covered bridge. We do several covered bridge projects. Which are beautiful. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, you know a lot of that work is done not by us, but you know we do oversee it. Um, another good example is the Ashland Riverfront. Okay. Uh, it was transportation money, in a sense that it came down out of the federal funds, and we uh, administered the the funding for it. Okay. Uh, while uh, the city and and all the other entities take care of the project. So okay. you know my you know my hats off to the McConnell House folks here in Greenup County and and everyone who oversee this project because it's. It's wonderful. A, it's a beautiful, and, beautiful you know, place. Yeah, and we, we you know, we, we help with the funding and we kind of help where we can, mm -hmm. but it's, it's really uh, a, 
the credit is, is due to those local folks who, sure. who do a great job with the money that, that we can help them with. All right, interesting. Okay, so since we are getting in tis the season <laughs> of the snow and the ice and you know the dreaded slick roads, um, we are going to talk just, I guess, um, we'll touch on the ABC plan for, for roads. I guess that's the, the generic approach to, I guess, how you guys handle the upcoming sure. uh, bad weather. Sure, and you know, as everyone is aware right now, we've already had our first snowstorm. Sure. So right now, our focus is on making sure that any time winter weather occurs, mm -hmm. uh, we have crews out to uh, salt the roads, mm -hmm. scrape the snow off, mm -hmm. try to get it back to normal conditions as quickly as possible. Now, what what happens? You know, that starts at a at a regional level, and that we watch the weather patterns, and we you know we always have crews on call um, during this from October to March. They they are subject to coming in at any time of the day, seven days a week. Okay. And that's that's our, our basic plan. Uh, and you know our most recent Friday, we had crews come in about 1:30 in the morning on their day off. On their day off. In green up in Boy <laughs> Counties, and they salted the roads to make sure that this little bit of tiny bit of snow we had sure. uh, didn't cause any problems, any black ice and things like that. So uh, very necessary. Um, but what we do, because you know we have 2,000 miles of state highways in 10 counties, we have roughly 75 snow plows. Mm -hmm. Well, you do some quick math, you can understand, it takes a long time sure. to scrape all of the roads and salt all of the roads. Um, so we use a priority system. Mm -hmm. um, we, we rank highways based on their connectivity to other highways and the, num and the, the amount of traffic that's on those highways. Sure. Uh, so, for instance, US 23, I 64, uh, Route 7, um, maybe some parts of uh, Route 1 and Route 2, those uh, are the big U piece. US 60, any of the federal highways, those are what we would call priority A. Okay. In other words, we try to get to them first. Okay. Uh, within the first few hours of a storm, we're trying to get them first. So that, you know, when people get out to these major highways and there's such an influx of traffic, then there, there are, you know, there, that highway is treated so that it can handle some of that traffic sure. and, and be safer that way. Uh, and then we work our way back into the smaller roads, the more rural routes that, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the four digit routes you may see, okay. you know, some of those are our uh, priority B and C routes. Okay. And so we try to take those in order so that we can uh, get the most benefit you know, the, well, I'll say it this way, we, we benefit the most travelers the quickest sure. that way. Um, and it's just, it's a system that has worked very well um, uh, for quite a long time. And, uh, you know, it seems to, it seems to, to work really well. And you know, to ensure that we can get people to where they need to go yeah, quickly. Absolutely. Well, we are going to take a quick commercial break and then we're going to come back and talk obviously a lot more about snow and ice removal <laughs> sure. because like I said, it's the season for, for all of this uh, troubling <laughs> um, weather that is going to be, I'm sure, uh, impacting a lot of travelers uh, for the holidays. So we were going to hear a lot more about that. Okay. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Our patients are priority number one. For the seventh straight year, Our Lady of Belfont Hospital has received Health Grades Outstanding Patient Experience Award and the hospital continues to be placed in the top 5% in the nation for outstanding patient experience. Our Lady of Belfont Hospital says thank you to our patients for this People's Choice honor. Our Lady of Belfont Hospital on a mission for good health for you and your family. The fine people at Carmen Funeral Home have been working with families in need for over 100 years. Carmen Funeral Home offers compassionate and caring services to those in their time of need from pre-arrangement to final arrangements. With two convenient locations in Flatwoods and Russell, Carmen Funeral Home, putting people first since 1913. You know, I was Hi, I'm Julie Reeves. You're watching Green at Beacon.com, a member of the Beacon Media Group. The force has got a lot of power, and it makes me feel like that. Hello everyone, we are back and I'm here with Alan Blair and we are talking about snow and ice removal and we had just, um, I guess, wrapped up talking about the ABC plan for roads and uh, talked about how you were treating the most heavily traveled roads first. Exactly. And that you had 2,000 miles of 
roads to treat in your District 9 area um, with 75 trucks. And like I said, doing the math, that's not a lot of trucks for a lot of roads. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So you want to treat the uh, most you know heavily traveled roads, uh, the busiest roads first, and then work your way back to the it, to the lesser ones. Exactly. But you know, you know, we do we do tend to get to every road within the first uh, eight hours or so of a storm. Sure. Uh, so we do we do have uh, you know we do have some really committed crews who mm-hmm. who watch and, and you know and any time there's a an, an isolated issue. You know, we may be on some of the back roads uh, earlier, so sure. it just depends on, and it really depends on the storm. You know, one of the things about snow and ice removal is the difficulty is you never know what's going to happen. You know, yeah. it could be ice, it could be snow, it could be, and it could keep it could, coming. It could change the rain. <laughs> exactly. I mean, they're, they're, yeah, and and I have to credit our our crews out there. You know, some of them have been driving these snow plows for you know decades, and they they know. They can they can tell you what's going to happen when just by looking at you know the type of snow it sure. is they know exactly what's going to happen <laughs> and uh, and they're really good at what they do they're professional drivers I, I try to say that anywhere I go mm-hmm. um, you know they, they are professionals uh, sure you know, absolutely they, they they know how to do this and uh, and we trust them to to do a great job and they do and they, yes they, they make the right decisions exactly mm-hmm. so in talking about snow and ice removal yes. how exactly do you do it i mean is there well, a special concoction that you guys are putting <laughs> on the roads well I, I actually uh or do you have several well we have actually several things we can use okay um, uh, I'll, I'll start about the pre-treatment first because everybody wonders these days about okay. uh, what's what are those lines all over the highway uh-huh. what are those you know what did you do did you cut the highway <laughs> um but anytime you see the, the, the lines on a highway, it just, just looks like little streaks okay. going down through the highway, uh, is our pretreatment. It's a, a brine or okay. saltwater solution that we spray on the highway. Okay. Now, what, what occurs there is when uh, it will dry. It, uh, it, the temperature is about right, which is basically below freezing. Okay. And, uh, if it, and it's a dry road, then it will dry on there. A thin layer of saltwater will dry on, onto the highway. Uh, then when the precipitation starts, uh, it mixes okay. with that salt and kind of keeps ice from forming on the road in that in the early hours of a storm. And as we mentioned before, that's our best defense, really, okay. because if you know if we can keep that ice from forming originally till we get our trucks across it with some salt and some plow blades, then it, it's a lot easier sure. to manage. Uh, once ice forms on the surface of a highway. You're kind of in it's, trouble. it's really hard if you can't yeah if you can't yeah. if you can't scrape it off then what you have to do is you have to force it into a solution mm-hmm. and if uh, anybody everybody's familiar with putting uh, antifreeze in your mm-hmm. in your car uh, well our, our salt and salt water is an antifreeze okay it prevents water from freezing at 32 degrees it takes it down colder uh, so what we have to do is get that solution right on a road you mix snow with salt and you get a salt water, and it won't freeze at 32. It'll freeze a lot lower. Okay. Um, so your next question would be, what happens when it's 10 degrees? <laughs> <laughs> when it's really cold, we have a solution called calcium chloride. Okay. That we add to the salt, uh, which is just plain rock salt, mm-hmm. uh, and the potassium, the calcium chloride helps um, that be a better antifreeze. Okay. And so we can get down to close to the into the single digits which we've been seeing a lot of well here, we have here lately but thank heavens we haven't had any precipitation with it yet it's just been this cold yes terribleness yes. <laughs> but, and, and last year we had some single digit and below zero temperatures mm-hmm. and Certainly. we had to say and you know it's an unfortunate thing but we had to tell people below zero we don't have that much that really works sure so your best defense is either if you can't stay home then leave early take yes. it really slow sure and make sure you get there safely but you know we can we can scrape it with a plow blade. Mm-hmm. There's still going to be ice if you know because we don't have anything that will melt it really below zero effectively anyway. Sure. Uh, we can we can try. But so then so say now we've got the sure. the, the pretreatment on and and, uh-huh. and we have a terrible storm and now we've got we you do have snow and you do have ice and then you do have to bring the the plow blades out. And I mean, does that cause a problem for roads? I mean, when you start to talk about destruction of the oh, roads, I oh. mean, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> cre- it's, it's, now it's, you're going to create some summer work. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and unfortunately, it's it's one of those uh, sure. it's one of those situations. Uh, you know, you do have to uh, uh, be aware that when we when you put a, a corrosive chemical like mm-hmm. salt water on uh, blacktop, mm-hmm. which is already made to sort of be a little flexible, sure, uh, it can damage it, mm-hmm. um, and the plow blades can can also peel up 
sections of blacktop that may be a little cracked mm-hmm. or faulty uh, and it that makes for potholes in the summer uh, so you know that's what our crews end up doing a lot in the summer is patching some of these places sure. uh, we have you know paving that we do routinely every year uh, that takes care of a lot of that but yeah I mean it's it's one of those uh, you know it's just one of those uh, uh, things in life exactly you what to, you're you know, gonna do <laughs> if uh, you can't you can't leave the the snow and ice on the road exactly because that's dangerous uh, sure. and so we have to remove it um you know we do try to make sure we use the right amount of salt for mm-hmm. the situation you know strange as it may sound too much salt uh will, will is is just as bad of a problem as not enough okay so we try to hit that that area in the, in between that's just right okay uh, and, and the optimal amount of salt and Fortunately for us, we have plenty. Okay, um, well that's good. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, good news. <laughs> we uh, the uh, each uh, we have a maintenance facility in each county uh, okay. as part of our uh, not only our, our maintenance activities like pothole patching, but mm-hmm. in the winter we have snow and ice removal. So each county has a fleet of trucks okay. and snow and snowplow blades and a salt dome which we store our salt in. Um, and there are the the gigantic domes and. In all, right. all of our facilities. Can't miss those. Can't miss them. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we, we store roughly 25,000 tons mm-hmm. of salt on, across our 10 counties. Uh, some of the storage domes can hold up to 5,000 tons. Wow. And I think if my math's right, that's about 10 million pounds. That's crazy. So Just, it's, this it's is a, a random question, but yes. where does the salt come from? I mean, well, I, well, at, you know, there are companies, you know, Morton uh-huh. um, and some of the other salt companies. Uh, there are a lot of mines. In Michigan, under the lakes, okay. uh, as well as uh, several other parts of the country uh, and overseas, in some other countries, um, but primarily it is shipped into here. Uh, we receive a lot on the barges uh, that dock up here in Greenup County, okay, uh, and they they ship it across the across the state, and we we receive some of that, okay. Uh, also from docks in Louisville and other places, it comes in and uh, it's trucked into our facilities and offloaded there, and sure. we store it. Um, and you know, like I said, we store between two two thousand to five thousand in each of the counties uh, of tons, and that's that's a lot of salt. That is but, a lot of salt. But I know that we were we were speaking earlier before the interview started about you know budgeting the yeah. salt, <laughs> you know, because you do have to stretch it all the way to March. Because we you, do. you know yeah. um, that last uh, was it last year? You said that there was a what? big storm that came in in March, and being like, well, it, yeah, it could yeah. have, and you know. That's that's one of those things where twenty five thousand tons, and we continually receive shipments sure. throughout the year uh, to kind of replenish. Uh, but last year we had such uh, a, a number of snow incidents that exactly. uh, uh, that we had to respond to that we used uh, all of what we started with plus what plus we had received. Some. So we used uh, over, you know more than twenty five thousand tons. <laughs> it is a lot of salt. Um, it is, uh, but mm-hmm. you know we feel it's necessary to make sure that. The traveling public can get to where they need to go. Absolutely. Um, you know, and that you know, and I'll I'll take this time to say too that, you know, while we do salt and and remove the mm-hmm. the snow with plow blades, it is not always perfect. Sure. Um, we you know it until until it gets above freezing, and and, and the road's dry, then I think everyone should should you know slow down mm-hmm. and take it easy out there because. You know, we can salt it and we can plow it, but there can still be ice form. Absolutely. And there can still be slick spots. And, Absolutely. You know, our I, I will, like I said before, we'll give our crews absolute faith in what they do. They are professionals and they really do a great job. They work 12-hour shifts. Mm-hmm. Uh, they come in on holidays. They, and last year they came in on every holiday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they came in like on their day off this year yes. already. And, you know, they, they, they will respond at any time. Because you just don't know what the weather's going to do. You don't. Do. And yeah. they leave their families behind and they're mm-hmm. out there in the worst conditions possible. Sure. Trying to make the roads better. And they do a great job. Um, but still yet, Mother Nature can really... Do whatever she wants. <laughs> and and uh, no matter what we do, the roads can still be slick. You know, like I said, until it's above freezing and it's dry on the roads. You know, you need to treat the roads. And anybody who drives on them needs to treat the roads as if there could be a problem around that next curve absolutely and, you know our our best advice is just to slow down and our our plow drivers will tell you can tell you horror stories where people don't slow down sure and they think that they can go fast yeah, and the I next guess. curve will get them absolutely and we just don't want that to happen 
you know that's why we're out there plowing and we would you know that's why we ask people to slow down you know plan ahead take your time you know if uh, you don't need to get there till you know it, you don't yeah. need to get there in a rush you just need to take your time exactly so. leave early and you know and, and plan for those for those um, you know problems on the road yep leave exactly. early arrive safely exactly <laughs> well thank you so much for, for coming uh, down welcome. here today and it's really interesting to hear about all the, the different the science behind uh, <laughs> <laughs> behind snow removal and um, like I said, and just and, and the safety tips because that's that's the most important thing, especially with the upcoming holidays. We want everyone to arrive to their destination safely, and like I said, make sure that you plan ahead, leave early, drive slow, and and really thank the crews that are out there uh, working hard. I, I would, yes. I mean, yes. it's it's a it's a sometimes a thankless job, but, sure. Uh, but our it's our goal to make sure everyone is safe, mm -hmm. uh, winter or summer. You know, that's why we are there, and that's our that's why we exist. We're easy to find on the web. If anybody has a concern or question, okay, let us know. Sure, you know, we we need eyes everywhere. You know, it, that way we can help. Yeah. But that's our job to help and, and keep people safe. So, and remember that Alan Blair here is the face <laughs> <laughs> of the Department of Transportation for District mm -hmm. Nine. And thank you so much again. You're and uh, next up, I believe we have the interview with um, um, Melissa Mahaney from the director. She's the director of Home Health for Our Lady of Belfont Hospital. And thanks again. And uh, going to commercial. Please. Yes, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Stoltz Pharmacy is now offering patients compounding for their prescription needs. Stoltz Pharmacy is the only pharmacy in the area that is PCCA certified. We can provide you with hormone replacement, neuropathy creams, scar creams, pediatric prescriptions, and we can even help you with your veterinarian needs. If you have any questions, please call 606-834-1052. That's 834-1052. Stoltz Pharmacy in Greenup Flatwoods in Wheelersburg. More than you expect from a pharmacy. Stoltz Pharmacy. At Meredith Chiropractic, you will enjoy state-of-the-art chiropractic facilities and discover the true wellness lifestyle. Dr. Terry Meredith is a member of Great Doctors of Chiropractic and has helped many in the Ashland area experience natural healing without surgery or drugs. If you're looking for a skilled chiropractic doctor, visit MeredithChiropractic.com, call 329-8158, or visit Dr. Meredith's office at 2120 Carter Avenue in Ashland. Hi, I'm Julie Reeves. You're watching Green at Beacon.com, a member of the Beacon Media Group. The force has got a lot of power and it makes me feel like that. We are with Melissa Mahaney, who is head of Home Health Services at Our Lady of Belfont Hospital today and today and every day, right? That's right. So, Melissa, tell me a little bit about yourself, where you went to school, where you're from, what you do here. Well, I completed my bachelor's degree in nursing at Morehead State University, and then I finished my master's with Walden University in, in Baltimore, Mar or Maryland. Is that um, online? It's online. It's online. Um, I am the director of home care for, we have Kentucky and Ohio office for Belfont. Um, I manage and direct everything from our referral process on the intake side all the way through billing and everything in between. Um, we service about 400 patients or so a month. And now, our, uh, how long have you been at Our Lady of Belfort? I've been here for about six years. So, you're, uh, did you say, is your bachelor's degree in nursing? Is it, it is. It is. And so you've added business courses to allow you to do this? Or? I have a master's of, of uh, science in nursing for, okay. in education. Okay. In education. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so explain to me, even though I, I know, let's explain to them what home health does, what you do in the home. Uh, the type of nurses that, that you try to recruit, et cetera. Sure. Sure. We have about 50 employees here in home care, um, and that ranges everywhere from clerical staff all the way through therapy. We provide in the home skilled nursing services, PT, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, home health aides, and medical social work. Um, I always like to say that we're an extension of the hospital or the physician's practices. Um, we're the eyes and ears out there when you go into the home. Um, a lot of patients have a hard time transitioning from the hospital to home, so we're there to help them do that. Um, we do a lot with, um, you know, your basic skills, IV therapy, wound care, um, like I said, physical therapy, those types of things. But we also do a lot of caregiver support, education, um, coordinating services for the patient in the community. Um, <clears throat> we do um, chronic disease management. We have telehealth monitoring. Um, so that we can see our patients virtually, remotely. 
um, and keep an eye on them a little bit closer. So most people do not realize that when you go into the home that you can do anything that are done here that doesn't require advanced equipment. You don't, you can't do x-rays at the house, but, well, and you probably can, but that's, that's not your normal. Right. We, we can, we partner with other um, companies that come in and do the x-rays and things of that nature, but yes, we can pretty much do in the home pretty much what you can do in a hospital setting. And so the, the big thing that I, that I was able to extract, I, I, I want to point out that I had home health for six weeks and I, they changed my wound vac and, and, mm-hmm. and that type of thing and changed my dressing and I had to have a pick line and all, mm-hmm. that, all that happiness is that you have to do what you're told. Home health doesn't fix it. You have to do what the doctors have told you to do. Right, right. We're there, we're there to support. Um, you know, the care that's being good, that's going on in the home, whether, um, you know, if you have a wound back, well, I can, we can change the wound back, but you've got to do, you've got to eat good and do those things that you're supposed to do before you're successful. So home care, we try to get a patient to where they can manage their own disease processes. And we're, we're here to make you hopefully to get you independent so that you can be successful long-term. And so let's, let's, uh, continue to talk just a little bit about uh, how many nurses do you send out? I know you said you had 50, mm-hmm. basically 50 in the department. But how many nurses do you send out? The other thing you need to talk about is the fact that they are available 24 hours a mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. Yep, we have um, around 20 nurses and 10 therapists and four or five home health aides that are out in the community. We're in seven counties, in, in oh, five in Kentucky, two in Ohio. Um, and we do have a, a RN that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, those nurses range from, uh, we do have a couple of LPNs, but most of our nurses are RNs. Um, we have several uh, that have bachelor's degrees and some that are working on their master's degrees. Um, our physical therapists, um, for the most part, have master's degrees or above, as well as our occupational and speech therapists. Um, so uh, the competencies, um, we provide a, a month-long competencies here when people start with us. So um, they're very skilled and very competent when they go out to see patients. So if there's one thing that you'd really like to say about home health, uh, why, don't, why don't you tell me what that is? The things that you would like people to know for sure. I think, you know, this is uh, National Home Care Month. November is National Home Care Month, and it reminds me of the value of home care. Um, people sometimes don't understand all that we do in the home and that, that they are eligible for services. Um, you know, it, home care can make the difference between going back into the hospital or staying in your own home. Um, we provide an alternative to going to nursing home, um, and we provide that care in the setting of their own home where they're comfortable. Um, so uh, home care is that um, person, that, that entity, that group that can really help you transition out of that hospital or even from the nursing home. Um, and, you know, like I said, lo- a lot of people don't realize that they're eligible for an episode of care. And um, we're, we're kind of that we look holistically at the patient. So we're, we're not just looking at your medical condition. We're going to look to see, do you have caregiver support? Do you have the finances to buy the food that you need for your heart failure or your diabetes? Um, we have a medical social worker that, that looks into, um, are there other insurances out there, maybe some state assistance, whatever, um, that can help you you know, in your home. So, um, you know, if, if I could say anything, home health really looks at the whole person and we're sometimes you can't see the whole person in the doctor's office. You can't see the whole person in the hospital setting. Right. Um, you're, you're more concerned with acutely what's going on with that patient right now. I've got to get them stable in the home. We're looking at the patient's surroundings to see what is it that causes a patient to go back in the hospital or what is it that, that causes the patient to go to the ER so many times we're looking at the bigger picture. Um, so for an example, um, if a patient has um, COPD or emphysema and they're constantly getting into trouble or they're constantly exacerbating, we can go into the home and we have a couple that are trained to even look for molds and things of that nature that may be the reason why they're having all the exacerbations and try to coordinate that care and help them get the help they need to be successful. The other thing that was impressive to me was that when one of the things that I feared about home health care was that I would have to handle everything. That isn't true. Um, Julie uh, uh, Crum would 
call the insurance company or call here. They make sure that you're taken care of, not unlike if you're in the hospital. Right, right. We have um, prior authorization processes, and and um, we follow with it. We'll let you know right up front what your co-payment's going to be, how many visits we have authorized, all of those types of things. Um, and like I said earlier, we coordinate the care. So we'll call your physician to make sure you have your appointments. Um, if you need a specialist, we'll get you in with a specialist. If you need x-rays, we, we, do all, we coordinate all of that care for the best outcomes. Melissa, thank you very much. Thank you. First and People's Bank has six convenient locations to serve you. From South Shore to the main office, First and People's Bank has been serving this area with complete banking services since 1932. Visit the home office near you, First and People's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. We are the home office. Come visit any of our six locations. Visit the Sungate Alpaca Company to experience the vibrant cultural heritage of South America and discover the extraordinary luxury fabric called alpaca. Wrap yourself in a stylish alpaca scarf, transform your living room by adding texture and color with a hand-loomed alpaca throw blanket, and add a little extra warmth and cozy fashion with an alpaca hat and matching gloves. Visit SungateAlpaca.com for all your alpaca needs. Find us on Facebook for special deals and inventory updates. Shop Sungate Alpaca. Hello folks, we have a special guest. Um, Bud Matheny is here and we're going to talk a little bit about the open house that is going to be going on here at the McConnell House. And so Bud, um, you are fresh off of the uh, Habitat for Humanity. Uh. Yeah, we're in the final week of our build in Flatwoods. We, uh, we're going to have our dedication ceremony Friday at 3.30. So we're in the crunch to get it done. So I came sure. from there. I don't normally dress, I, I normally dress worse than this. <laughs> Love but it. Uh, we are excited about our Christmas open house here at the historic McConnell House. Uh, Claudine Williamson, if you know her from around this area, she has tremendous talent and she's done four beautiful Christmas trees. Uh, we're in the process of putting up garland and lights mm -hmm. and that's going to be Friday the, or Saturday the 13th. Great. Uh, 6 to 9 p.m. and we're really excited about that. Yeah, definitely. And the Christmas trees here at the house are absolutely beautiful. I think my favorite one is in the other room here across the hallway with the peacock feathers and the, and the blues and it is just, it's, it's gorgeous. She always comes up with a theme that uh, is new and fresh. The one in the dining room she did with ribbons and plates. Yes. I've never seen plates on a Christmas tree, but it is beautiful. It is. It's absolutely, they're like the, the red and white sort of traditional um, old time plates. And it is, it's, it is, it's very gorgeous. And, and this room, I mean, you can't beat the this room either. The every, every room has a fireplace with a mantle and they're all decorated. Exactly. Uh, we'll have refreshments, like refreshments, uh, Saturday the 13th. Okay. Uh, Santa Claus will be here for the kids. And Santa. And so we're excited about that. This it, is our second year of having Santa here. Okay, great. So you um, definitely come on down to the McConnell House on Saturday the 13th from 6 Saturday to... Saturday the 13th. Saturday. I said the same thing. Did you? Friday the 13th. Friday. Is it Friday? No, it's Saturday. 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 Friday the 13th comes on Saturday this one. <laughs> exactly. Or it's the 13th. <laughs> and Hank's back there with his hand he in his head. He says we've lost control. <laughs> he said, this train has derailed <laughs> from 6 to 9 to the beautiful McConnell house and, and see all the beautiful Christmas trees and for some light refreshments. And of course, Santa. Santa. And um, so that you can visit, like I said, the house and, and hear about all the other things that are coming up um, you know, in the spring. Yeah, and the important thing about our uh, open house is tours are available mm -hmm. and they're always free. Uh, public is invited to our open house and again, it's a free event. So come on out and get a tour of the house and see how it looks. Yeah, we've got some other things coming up and I don't remember the dates. So they're not on a Friday. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we have okay. our spring tea. We have yeah. our derby party, which is always the first Saturday in May, sure. and we're working on planning our croquet tournament in September. So we've got a, a full schedule of things coming up. Absolutely, and I said that way. We're coming to the open house. You can sort of hear about all the things that are coming up, you know, in, in 2015 for the McConnell House. And, and I am now a new board member, so. And we're glad to have you on board. Very excited about that. So we'll get some new ideas and, and you know, and generate yep. some excitement and <laughs> all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna let Bud get back onto the, the work site. I think you said you had some windows. We're putting in the window sills and finishing up the trim. It, yeah. So it's he, just about done. Yeah, he's got some windows in the car, so I'm gonna let him 
skedaddle out of here and get back to work um, on that wonderful project for Habitat for Humanity. Um, one of the many things that he's involved in that is just... And again, thank you for the opportunity to come and present our story. Yes, and well, thank you for letting us be here every week. We, we absolutely love being here. We were working earlier on filming our Christmas special. We had uh, Aaron Keaton here earlier and filming some great music, and uh, we're lining up a lot of special guests. I uh, thought a little of that, and I'm looking forward to it. Yes, uh, we are too. So thanks for being here, and we'll let you get back to work. Okay. And uh, we're going to go to commercial. And then after that, we are going to go to a cooking segment where I've made deluxe seven-layer cookies. Double crunch. <laughs> Double crunch. <laughs> our patients are priority number one. For the seventh straight year, Our Lady of Belfont Hospital has received Health Grades Outstanding Patient Experience Award. And the hospital continues to be placed in the top 5% in the nation for outstanding patient experience. Our Lady of Belfont Hospital says thank you to our patients for this People's Choice honor. Our Lady of Belfont Hospital on a mission for good health for you and your family. The fine people at Carmen Funeral Home have been working with families in need for over 100 years. Carmen Funeral Home offers compassionate and caring services to those in their time of need from prearrangement to final arrangements. With two convenient locations in Flatwoods and Russell, Carmen Funeral Home, putting people first since 1913. Hi, I'm Julie Reeves. You're watching Green at Beacon.com, a member of the Beacon Media Group. The force has got a lot of power, and it makes me feel like that. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my kitchen. Today, we are going to be making the deluxe seven layer cookie. I call this the deluxe version of a seven layer cookie because I had been using an old uh, recipe version of this and I found that the graham cracker bottom to this cookie was not substantial enough. So I sort of revved up the, uh, the amount of graham cracker bottom for this cookie and I also um, gave you an option to sort of play around with the types of baking chips um, that you could use here so that you could make this recipe your own. And I also um, gave you a little trick to use with the sweetened condensed milk to make this all stick together nicely because I know a lot of people were having trouble with this recipe. Um, the cookie sort of kind of came apart a lot, so I'm going to help you out with that. So. Get your papers and pens together and also remember that you can go onto greenitbeacon.com and greenitbeacon2.com for the recipe. So we're going to start out with four cups of graham crackers um, that will need to be crunched up. I'm going to show you how to do that. Four cups is about um, one whole box of this. I usually steal a couple off the top for myself because I like to eat them with peanut butter later on. Um, then you also need three uh, quarter cups of butter and you will need to melt that and you are going to use that to mix together for the graham cracker bottom and then you will also need one 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk and then you will need two cups of your choice of baking chips so you can use either peanut butter chips, butterscotch chips, semi-sweet chips, uh, white chocolate chips uh, whichever you would like to use but you'll use two cups of that and you can we're going to break that up into half cup increments. And then you also need one cup of shredded coconut and one half cup of chopped nuts. And today I'm going to use walnuts. Um, then you are going to need to preheat the oven to 350 degrees, which I have my oven turned on there. So if you hear a beep, that is letting us know that it is ready. And if you are wondering why I have a can of sweet peas out here, I'm going to show you that right now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start and make our graham cracker crust. I like to make my graham cracker crust from actual graham crackers instead of buying the, the crumbs already crunched because I think that it leaves the um, graham crackers a little more um, <clears throat> substantial. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take a, a gallon size bag and sort of crunch the crackers up as I go into the bag to kind of get a start on this process. Set this aside. I'm just going to do one of these sleeves of crackers at a time. 
smash the air out of it. And then we will take our can of sweet peas or whatever you have on hand that's a larger can and roll over top of the graham crackers to crunch these puppies up. And again, you can buy graham crackers that are already um, crunched up, but I like to do it this way because it leaves some larger pieces in there and I think it makes for a better crust. And you can do it this way for cheesecakes or for other pies that call for a graham cracker crust. Lately though, for my cheesecakes, I have been using vanilla wafers for the, for the crust and that is a really nice um, variation in the recipe and it makes a nice sweet crust as well. So we're gonna flip our bag over and crunch the other side. Told my husband what we were making here today and he was thrilled because this is his absolute favorite favorite cookie so he usually takes his own little container of these and hides them upstairs in the bedroom <laughs> so that the kids cannot uh, steal them all all right so this first batch is already smashed up enough so we'll go ahead and dump it into our bowl And we'll get our next sleeve of graham crackers out. And this doesn't matter, but I am going to take some off the top for myself <laughs> for later because I like them with peanut butter. And I'm going to crunch the crackers up out of the sleeve. There we go. Kind of helps out so that we're not dealing with whole crackers in the bag. And voila. And zip our Ziploc bag back up. Grab our sweet peas. Start crunching. We'll let a little bit of the air out of this bag. A little bit too much. good cookie to make for the holidays because it is very uh, pretty. It's got the coconut layers and of course the um, chocolate chips and the peanut butter chips to sort of give it some good color. I'm not a big traditional cookie fan so this is one of my favorites as well. are good and smashed with my peas here. Go ahead and empty this into our bowl. And set our bag to the side. Now we're going to take three quarters cup of butter and I already have mine um, melted but you're going to start with three quarters of a cup and then melt it um, and then go ahead and drizzle this over top of your graham cracker mixture, like so. I'm going to have to grab a spoon. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a stir.
the idea is just to get this all coated on here so that um, when we move it over to the pan that it will press down to make the cookie bottom. going to check to make sure that I'm going to have a good mash to that and I think we'll stick together. If it looks a little dry, um, you can go ahead and add a little bit more melted butter into it to make sure that it does smash into the bottom of the pan here. So next up I'm going to take um, a 13 by 9 inch pan, which I have over here, and you're going to want to go ahead and grease this pan to make um, these brownies or these cookies come out of it a little bit easier because they do tend to stick a little bit. <coughs> Go ahead and use some Crisco here. Because for some reason, I keep going to the grocery store and walking right past my cooking spray <laughs> every time. This has been like the third time I've been to Kroger's now, and it's been on my list, but just keep walking past it. So we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. Which, no problem. All right, so we have the 13 by 9 inch pan um, already greased up, so our cookies won't stick. And then we're going to go ahead and dump our graham cracker crunch um, mixture into the bottom here. Then I'm going to go ahead and start to press this firmly into the bottom. Just go ahead and use your hands to do that. Because this is going to make the bottom layer of our cookies. And to just to remind everyone, this is why I call it the deluxe version of this because a lot of the other recipes did not have um, a very, uh, I guess, thick crust of this. And so a lot of the cookies were crumbling and not holding together very well. So I changed this recipe up and made the graham cracker bottom thicker to hold the cookie together a little bit better. Be afraid to really get this in there tight. Okay, so as you can see, our crust is smashed <laughs> down into the pan here. Um, it's nice and firm. So we're going to move on to the next step of our recipe. I'm going to grab a towel. My cameraman's going to kill me because I keep going over there. <laughs> And grabbing stuff. All right, so the next part is, is you're going to take your 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk and we're going to go ahead and open it. So 
So this is where my recipe sometimes um, veers off from some of the more traditional recipes. So I have doubled the, um, the density of the graham cracker crust down here. And this part of the recipe, I actually add half of the sweetened condensed mixture here, and then I'll add half at the end. This helps it also to stick together better. So we're going to go ahead and drizzle one half of our can of the sweetened condensed milk uh, at this step of the process. Let's go ahead and drizzle it. here on the edges and stuff so that everything sticks together nice. Probably would have been a little bit easier if I just had one of those cannabis that just made the one hole in it, but it's one of those other modifications that you'll make when you do the recipe the next time. to the halfway point here. I'm going to set this aside and now comes the fun part. So here we're going to use two cups of your choice. You can mix and match of whatever type of baking chips you want to use. So my favorite is I like to use, and I'm going to split this up in, up in half cup increments, is I'm going to use a half a cup of butterscotch chips. And you can do this however you want to do it. So we'll do a half a cup of butterscotch chips. Ta-da. And then I have a um, combination here of swirled milk chocolate and peanut butter chips. I dropped one and Pete is benefiting from that. That's why my dog loves to be in the kitchen whenever I'm cooking. Because I tend to make a mess. <laughs> and then I am going to use a half cup of the regular semi-sweet Hershey's chips. Sprinkle those all over the top. And then, this has been my recent addition to this recipe, and I love this one. This um, is the Heath English Toffee Bits. So again, this part of the recipe, you can do whatever you like here. You can add white chocolate, you can you just, you just go crazy here. This is an excellent addition here. Even if you wanted to put little chunks of caramel in here, just go for it. Yum. Okay, so that is our two cups of your choice of baking chips. And the next part is our one bag of shredded coconut. And you can get the sweetened or the unsweetened, but I went for the sweetened because why not? <laughs> and you're going to go ahead and put that on top. Of your deluxe seven layer cookies. Spread that around. And last, but not least, is our one half cups of chopped nuts. I'm just gonna go ahead and chop these in the bag <laughs> with my hand. Makes it easier. 
So in this recipe, I'm using walnuts. I think that is what I typically use uh, every time for this recipe. It is best to add this, these, the nuts to this recipe to last because it helps to hold the coconut down. And then we're going to drizzle the remaining half of the uh, sweetened condensed milk on top. So again, so that everything sticks together nicely. I have read several reviews on, on uh, this recipe and was reading about the problems that people were having and so this is my way of fixing those problems. So we're going to take our remaining half can of sweetened condensed milk and drizzle on the top. of our seven layer brownie, brownie, cookie, whatever. <laughs> it's seven layers of goodness. And this will bake down in and help everything gel really nicely together so that whenever you cut it, everything will stick together. Like I said, that has been the problem whenever you do read reviews about this is that it's flakes apart, uh, it won't hold together. So the milk on top of the graham cracker crust and then the milk then at the end has eliminated this problem. So this is my husband's favorite cookie recipe, so I make it a lot and it works for me. So we are going to add this to our oven at 350 degrees. We're going to bake this for about 25 minutes until the coconut just starts to get golden brown and then we'll take it out. So I'm going to add this to the oven and this is what it looks like before we go in and then we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Okay folks, we have taken our deluxe seven layer cookies out of the oven and they look absolutely fabulous. They were in there for about 25 minutes and you can see that our coconut has toasted nicely, especially around the edges. So this um, is a good indication that they are done. So we have taken them out of the oven and we're going to let these cool completely uh, before we cut them into squares for serving because I said all the, the chips are in there and they're all gooey and so we want to make sure that they cool completely so that they cut uh, easier. So we're going to go ahead and go through the uh, ingredients so that everybody can get those one last time. And again, remember you can go on to greenitbeacon.com or greenitbeacon2.com for these um, ingredients and also for um, the video again. And remember that this video and all the other um, ones that we had for any other recipes are on archive. So make sure that you go there and check those out. So here are the ingredients for the deluxe seven layer cookies. You will need four cups of graham crackers and you will need to, um, I guess, smash those up. <laughs> and you can do that in a gallon size bag with a can of peas or corn or whatever you have uh, handy there to go ahead and roll those out and smash them up nicely. You will need three quarters a cup of butter that is melted to mix in with that to make your graham cracker cookie bottom. If it looks a little dry, you can go ahead and add a little bit more butter to it, but three quarters of a cup is generally about as much as you need. You want to push that uh, down into the bottom of your 13 by nine inch pan very firmly. And then you will also need one 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. You are going to want to drizzle, drizzle half of that can onto your uh, cookie bottom and then save half for later. Then you will need two cups of your choice and this is where the recipe is awesome, I think, because you can use whatever it is that you like to use. Uh, and you can use this in half cup increments of whatever type of baking chips you want to use. And this recipe, I used a half a cup of butterscotch chips, a half a cup of the swirled milk chocolate and peanut butter chips, a half a cup of the regular semi-sweet Hershey's chips, and then a half a cup of my favorite, uh, the Heath uh, candy bar uh, bits, which is really, really nice, makes a nice addition to this cookie. And then you will need one bag of shredded coconut to add on top. And then you will need one half cup of chopped nuts. And in this recipe, I used walnuts. Add all of that to the top of your graham cracker cookie bottom, and then go ahead and drizzle the remaining one half 
um, can of the sweetened condensed milk on top so that everything sticks nicely together. Put it in the oven for 350 degrees for about 25 minutes until the uh, coconut really starts to brown nicely. And then voila, it's done. You're gonna make sure it does cool completely. And another really important tip is that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your 13 by nine inch pan is greased before you put it all of the ingredients in there. Um, it makes a lot easier to clean up and it makes for the cookies to come out of the pan a lot easier. I've made the mistake of not greasing it one time and I won't make that mistake again. <laughs> um, so I really hope that you enjoyed today's cooking session and make sure that you uh, tune in um, on Wednesdays for um, our shows. We have great interviews with local people around the town and of course every uh, cooking segment is always as, as joy for me to do. I love to cook. I love having you here in my kitchen. So till next time, I'm Brittany Hoback. First and People's Bank has six convenient locations to serve you. From South Shore to the main office, First and People's Bank has been serving this area with complete banking services since 1932. Visit the home office near you, First and People's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. We are the home office. Come visit any of our six locations. Visit the Sungate Alpaca Company to experience the vibrant cultural heritage of South America and discover the extraordinary luxury fabric called alpaca. Wrap yourself in a stylish alpaca scarf, transform your living room by adding texture and color with a hand-loomed alpaca throw blanket, and add a little extra warmth and cozy fashion with an alpaca hat and matching gloves. Visit SungateAlpaca.com for all your alpaca needs. Find us on Facebook for special deals and inventory updates. Shop Sungate Alpaca. We're so glad that you joined our show today, and I want to give a special thank you to our guests, Alan Blair from the Department of Transportation, and Melissa Matheny from Our Lady of Belfont Hospital, who is the Director of Home Health, and um, also for uh, Bud Matheny um, from the uh, McConnell House, reminding us that the open house um, is the 13th, which we have decided is a Saturday, <laughs> from 6 to 9. So if you guys are out, just want to make sure that you stop on down here and see the beautiful Christmas trees. And also Santa will be here from 6 to 9. I want to remind everybody that we are hard at work right now filming our Christmas special, which will be airing uh, on the 17th after our regularly scheduled show um, at 1 p.m. So we will um, air it right after the show on the 17th and also again on the 18th. Um, and then also it will be archived for viewing later. So we have a lot of very talented guests lined up that we have been filming. And um, so we're gonna make sure that you guys uh, tune in for that. Next week, we are gonna have a very special guest, which will be State Senator Robin Webb. She's gonna come down here for an interview. So I'm very excited about that. And also we will have Nancy Hutchinson, who is head of the KEDC, which is the Kentucky Educational Developmental Corporation. <laughs> um, so you guys are gonna make sure that you tune in for that. And um, again, very pleased that uh, we have as many viewers as we, as we do. We keep picking up viewers every week and uh, we're thrilled at the success of this program. And um, also very thrilled that we are here every week at the McConnell House and um, that they let us come down here to use their beautiful home. So make sure that you tune in weekly every Wednesday at 1 p.m. on greenitbeacon.com and greenitbeacon2.com. Until next week, I'm Brittany Hoback. This is the Green Up Beacon News Magazine, a presentation of the Green Up Beacon and First in People's Bank and Trust. Also brought to you by Stoltz Pharmacy, Our Lady of Belfont Hospital, Carmen Funeral Home, Meredith Chiropractic Office, and Tanya Pullen, State Representative. Your host today, Brittany Hoback, along with co-host Tank Bond, and editor and producer Keith Adkins. This is an exclusive presentation of the Green Up Beacon, greenupbeacon.com and greenupbeacon2.com.